The opinions expressed during this podcast are the individual's own and do not represent those of Wyndham City Council. Hello everyone and welcome to Recently Returned. I'm one of your regular hosts, Kirsty, and I'm joined today by Emily. Hello. And Paulina, welcome back to the podcast. Hello. Hi. So today we're doing another biography and memoir episode because we got so many great entries last time and we're just really keen to share some more with you. So let's get straight into it. Very uh, excited to find out what Emily and Paulina are recommending. So I'm just going to start off with Emily. What's the first memoir or biography you've got for us today? Yes, so my first one is a biography and it's called Matilda, Empress, Queen, Warrior, and it's by Catherine Hanley. Um, it was published in 2019 and I actually came across this book while I was working at the library. I was shelving some books <laughs> and found this um, found this book on the shelf and thought, oh, I've heard of Matilda, but I don't know her full story. I think I'd like to borrow this and find out exactly what her story is. Um, and so for those who aren't really sure who Matilda was, but um, some people might have a kind of general, basic general knowledge of um, the English monarchy back in the Middle Ages. So most people have heard of William the Conqueror, so he's known as the first English king. Um, so he conquered England and Normandy and then basically established the lines, um, the English monarchy as we know it basically. Um, Matilda was his granddaughter and she became the first woman to be heir to the English throne. Um, but of course no one's heard of Queen Matilda um, and this is because she was never actually crowned Queen of England but she had the right to be <laughs> and mm. um, yeah so it's this intriguing part of uh, English history that um, that I find really fascinating and it's told um, it's written really really well so Catherine Hanley who's written this biography <clears throat> excuse me has um, done a lot of really interesting research um, into Matilda because um, Matilda, of course, being a female figure in history, we've kind of lost lots of information about her because most chroniclers of the time were men and didn't think that women's stories were really worth writing down. Um, but luckily we have her story out there now. And it's a very, um, it's a very dramatic story. There are so many fascinating and exciting and brutal stories of um, battle and and how she was became so close to being crowned and then wasn't and there was a civil war between her and Stephen who became king um, and Stephen basically uh, kind of swooped in and took the took the crown when he wasn't entirely entitled to it and that's how this you know civil war began. Sounds like this book has everything really. It does, yeah. Um, and I'm hoping that someone adapts this story for the screen because it's really worthy of, um, like, a, I think it could be a really fantastic TV miniseries or film. Yeah, so it, it was. It's a really good read. I'm reading it for the second time, and it's, um, it's a real page turner. I'm kind of, even though I know already what's going to happen, it's still really exciting, and it's a really good read the second time around. So. I highly recommend this to anyone who's interested in English history or medieval history um, or just anyone like me who's fascinated by stories of um, great women through history. I remember when that book came in uh, and I put it on the shelf for the first time and I went, oh, I nearly hugged it. I was so excited yeah. to see it. I used to read the um, Cadpal books about the um, monk in the time of uh, Stephen and um, Matilda and um, it's interesting reading those and just seeing how it affected the people and how uh, towns changed hands. I'd really love to read that biography first. She's very badly done by, wasn't she? Yes, yeah. Um, and especially because, so her father was King Henry I and he named her as his heir and he actually got all of the all of the nobles and all of the clergy to come and pledge their allegiance to her and they did this very publicly um, and very officially. And then at 
King Henry's death, because she was, uh, Matilda was overseas at the time, I think she was in, closer to Normandy, um, and Stephen happened to be closer to England and heard the news of the King's death first and kind of Mm. went over to London and essentially, yeah, declared himself king. (laughs) Yes, yeah. He was um he was her cousin, wasn't he? Yes, he was her first cousin. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yes. I I mean I could go on for hours telling this story, but <laughs> but yeah, I think people should read the book if they're interested, and and then we can have a full discussion. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, oh, it's That's a fascinating time, great. especially um she's quite a strong woman, wasn't she? Yes, and very intelligent and very very well suited to the throne. Mm. I mean, she was um she was crowned. She married um, the King of Germany, who was also Emperor of Rome. So she was Queen of Germany, Queen of the Romans, Empress of Rome. Um, She had all of this. um, She had a full and complete understanding of political strategy, um, war strategy. And even though she couldn't ride into battle herself, uh, being a woman of the time, um, she could still plan and, and, you know, be that uh, figurehead of authority, you know, behind behind battle lines so to speak uh so yeah she was and she was a very yeah very strong woman um and of course the chroniclers at the time um were kind of uh shocked to see a woman act with authority Mm. and basically act as a king which was what she um rightly should have been and it seems the way that they described her was uh kind of ridiculous if you were to apply those terms to a man to say that oh it's so shocking for this man to be acting with authority acting as a king that doesn't (laughs) of course he wouldn't say that about a man who was king but um yeah because she was a woman they found it hard to comprehend how how um how she could speak with um with such strong opinions and be offended when people showed her disrespect (laughs) it's like well no she's just acting as as a royal leader (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. nearly a thousand years later, you still see that sort of thing if a woman's too strong and speaks out, whereas, oh, what a commanding man, and oh, what, oh, that woman doesn't know what she's talking about. Men get to be leaders and women get to be bossy. Yes, yes. <laughs> what, what tends to be the narrative. Yes. Um, but I'm sure I'm, I'm definitely not the only person who has just added this to their to-be-read list. So thanks so much for bringing that one to our attention Emily Uh, and I'll just uh, move us on to Paulina what what's your first book? Uh, My first book is uh, Paul Jennings autobiography Paul Jennings that wrote um, Round the Twist and many other um, great children's books Um, it's called Untwisted the story of my life and the sub things is honest funny and insightful reflections on writing teaching love and Living from the Celebrated Children's Author. It's a wonderful book. I really, really enjoyed it. He writes very simply, very easily. I'm sure quick kids could read it. It's not nasty or anything. And it, it, he talks about problems in his life that made him understand children more. And, you know, things like he's very close to his mother, who ended up dying um, quite young, and his uh, father didn't seem to like him. And he always had that feeling that even though he'd done nothing, his father would say things like, oh, you won't amount to much, you'll be a labourer, you know. And it's it, it's very interesting. I mentioned like the page where he's talking about it, but he's saying these quotes that his father had said to him, and he remembers them like 50 years later, you know, really makes you think, you know, you've got to be careful what you say to, to your children. And yet he said, yet yeah, with his mother, um, they were together at the school one time and she said, when he's 15, and she said, oh, that girl in the library, she really liked you. She she makes good choices. So he said in one sentence, you know, she told him about how someone liked him and also given him a compliment. And he said that's what his mother was like. But his father's, oh, you'll never amount to, to much. It's not worth putting stuff in, effort in for you. And, and it's really sort of sad. But he said there are always little things like that. And I remember another bit too is talking about that he's a very shy child and he remembers himself as being shy and scared of everything. And yet he's also the leader of a gang when he was about seven (laughs) and they'd run around the streets doing all the naughty things they weren't supposed to. And, um, and putting, don't go near the train tracks. And they put Penny on the train tracks and 
get them squashed by the train and they um, get lanterns and go in the drains and just pop up in the middle of nowhere and let all the neighbours' chickens out so they had to run around chasing them. And um, <laughs> so he got into trouble quite often. Um, and yet he said, and yet he was this quite little shy boy and he couldn't sort of marry the two. And it, it gives him a lot of insight into things that he remembers. And he said in another occasion to him and a um, another celebrated uh, author had to go to, to a function and you had to um, do things like you did at school. It was an exhibition of a, in a museum of a school from years ago. And so they had to sit at the school desk and um, both of them said they felt really ill because they often scared in school that the teacher would go mad at them and they often sort of got picked on for no reason but you weren't doing the right thing at the right time, even the way you draw a circle or something. That's wrong. What are you doing? And um, he said it, it was very odd being 40, you're well-known, you're successful, but still that same fear came back. And he said maybe having the memory of that and being able to remember things like that is what made them both good authors for children because they could remember the problems they had when they were a child. That's good. I finished it last night. I'd love to say, tell the ending. Um, <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, so I really recommend that. And um, I'm, I'm sure children ten or over would like it as well. He, he hasn't got anything that you might be concerned about kids getting, but just. And he said, you know, kids are aware, aware of relationships and what happens as well, you know, on a certain level, you know, like no matter what your parents are saying, you know if they're not getting on well or things like that. So um, yeah. it, it's okay for kids to be aware of those things and that's what the books are like too, you know, just nuances of relationships and maybe you feeling how do I cope with this and the adult world so different. Yeah. He's been writing so long as well. I remember reading his books as, as a child and I think a lot of people would be in the same boat and can now pick up this memoir and get to know him through an adult lens as yes. well. So that sounds very and interesting. And he, he um, mentions things that happened in his life that he used for different books and different mm, stories. I was ask about yes, that. so it's really great. He said, I use this to great effect with blah, 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 or this little boy. Mm. And yeah, really enjoyable. And it makes me want to go back and um, look at some of his books. It, he, he is, he's a great writer. Fairly new as well. It is isn't new. It? Yes, it only came out last year, I think. Yeah. Well, adding another one to my Ooh. to be read list. This, this <laughs> year, so it's brand new. Mm. Yeah. Well, I I also have a book. I'll make this a quick recommendation because it's been a while since I read it. Uh, and it's also a quite a short memoir, really. I think it's less than 250 pages, but it packs such a punch. The Erratics by Vicky Laveau Harvey. Um, it won the Stella Prize in 2019. And it's it's well deserved. It's a it's a beautiful little memoir. The memoir centers around Vicky's relationship with her parents and her sister. When her mother falls and breaks her hip, uh, Vicky and her sister return to the family homestead in uh, Canada um, for the first time in in about eighteen years. They'd been practically disowned by her mother who suffered from an underdiagnosed mental illness, was delusional, isolationist, wouldn't let anyone onto the property and was a compulsive liar, very manipulative woman. And the, the siblings go across to the homestead partly to support her, but also to enact a plan to institutionalize their mother to stop her coming home because their father has been practically wasted away under her care, under like her malicious kind of starvation regime almost. And the book is just told in this very stark way that that mirrors the landscape and the the relationship between uh, the mother and the two siblings. They arrive in Canada and from the get-go you see how manipulative the mother is and 
the lies she's told. They arrive at the hospital and the the nurses and doctors don't believe that they're her children because she has told them that she only had one child mm. uh, and that that one child was a famous author and is now deceased. And they have to jump through all these hoops both to prove who they are but to also get her assessed as being incapable of living on her mm. own or, or even with the father who is not in a position to take care of her because she has been taking advantage of him. Mm. It sounds really, really bleak, <laughs> but it's also filled with this, this kind of wry, almost black humour as, as well. Um, I listened to the audio and I highly recommend that because um, Vicky narrates the book herself and some of those little little bits of humour I think come across mostly in her tone of voice as well. It's a very kind of dry, deadpan delivery. And I'm not sure that I'm doing the book justice, but it, even though it's very tough subject matter, it's beautifully written. It's It's a very quick read and... I, I just highly recommend it. That's very interesting. And especially as you say, the author reading it, and you get those nuances, which can sometimes be hard to pick up. Mm. Yeah. And because it's so short mm. as well, she doesn't go into very, it, like it doesn't get really dark. It just glosses over some and then focuses on small instances that build up the picture of the house with all the stuff that had been hoarded inside mm. and the, the way they'd been isolated in in this community because the the mother wouldn't let anyone visit. It reminds me um, a little bit of uh, Simone de Bouvier's uh, biography of her mother called A Good Death and her and her sister come back to look after a mother who's dying of bowel cancer and wanted to die at home. It's short but harrowing and um, mm. I remember at the end of it, she gave, I said, a month? That was only a month? You know, all the medical things and how quickly she went downhill i mean now there's more treatment but was like go home and nurse her till she dies and it yeah. was like a year <laughs> and you're just drained reading it it must have been awful going through and it made me think of that that you were talking about yeah it sounds similar does it have a satisfying ending or is it kind of open-ended or how does it leave you feeling at the end I think I was quite satisfied by the ending. I can't remember exactly how it ends, but there was definitely a resolution um, to the relationships. I can't say too much without mm. giving away <laughs> yeah. what happens. Um, but you're not you're not left feeling depressed or mm. or worried for the characters, the, the characters, the people. Yeah. So we'll move us back to Emily and ask for your second recommendation for us. Yes, so my second recommendation is a wonderful book that's a favourite of mine. Um, so it's called My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Durrell. So um, I'm not sure if either of you have seen a recent TV series, a British series called The Durrells. Yes. Yes. Yes, so the story takes place. So um, it's written by Gerald um, and he... So it takes place during his childhood, and when he was about eight years old, um, his family, um, who lived in England, just kind of spontaneously decided, let's move to Greece, let's go to Corfu and stay there for a little while, and, and uh, yeah, just for a change of scenery. And so in Jerry's family, so he's the youngest um, sibling, but he has three older siblings. He has a sister, Margot, and two brothers, Leslie and Larry, um, and each of them have fantastic, unique, hilarious personalities, which is one of the greatest features of this of this book. And also his wonderful mother, who is just referred to as mother in the book. And so this book is so it's set in the 1930s, um, and it just takes place over about five years. And it's filled with these beautiful descriptions of this Greek island. And Jerry, who is fascinated by animals and nature, um, you follow his little adventures um, throughout the island and the creatures that he discovers. And so you have these beautiful descriptions of, of the nature there and the environment, um, but also matched with these hilarious anecdotes of very, very funny, uh, funny stories of 
whether it's just it could just be a hilarious conversation between him and his siblings or his siblings and, and their mother or there are a lot of very funny mishaps that happen with the animals which Jerry loves to collect and bring into the house and you have all sorts of creatures from magpies and pigeons to scorpions and geckos and all the hilarious things that ensue from bringing those creatures into the house um <laughs> So Gerald Durrell went on to become a famous um, conservationist. He set up the Jersey Zoo, didn't he? Yes, he did. He um, founded Jersey Zoo. I'm just reading here in the front page in 1959 as a centre for the conservation of endangered species. So yeah, you see his um, his passion for animals grow in this in this book from when he was just a child. Uh, so yes, highly recommended. It's a really good read. It is a wonderful book. I remember reading it um, when I was young and just even thinking of it makes me smile. You know, he's such a gifted yeah. writer and um, family are quite eccentric. <laughs> yes. And, it, sorry, and to carry on his childhood passion for his whole life, you know, is wonderful. Yeah. I definitely enjoyed the TV series and I was watching that with my family. So I'm thinking maybe this will be a book that I buy and, and pass around yes. the, mm. the lounge room. Um, and it's a sort of quartet. Is that what I um, want to? So I think it's, there is a trilogy. It's referred to as the Corfu trilogy. Um, so My Family and Other Animals is the first and then he went on to write um, two, two sequels, essentially, um, called one's called Birds, Beasts and Relatives, and the third is The Garden of the Gods. The title of that second one is just <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> yes. He wrote a lot of non-fiction later on too, didn't he? Yes, I, I believe he did. And he also wrote many other uh, memoirs as well that are all equally fascinating and full of funny stories, some of which feature his family as well. Yeah, all of um, all of his books are written with such great wit that they're all of them are really enjoyable. Thanks so much for that. It's definitely going on my list. And I wonder if Paulina's next pick will make my list even longer <laughs> again. We will see. <laughs> what have you got well, this from? is a really interesting book. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's a biography or it's sort of a multi-biography. <laughs> it's uh, brand new. I think it just came out in yeah, 2020 as well. Nigel Cawthorn, Assassinations That Changed the World. Ooh. It's fascinating. So um, it, it starts, they've got them in all different order. It starts with someone in 2020 and goes down to uh, Julius Caesar and so many people along the way that were assassinated and most of them are given about six pages so you've got a short biography of the person the things that led to the assassination and how it changed things afterwards i thought mm -hmm. it was fascinating michael collins in 1922 which um further increased the ira and got more people to join that led to a bit of problems um lord darnley in uh, 1567 which was the husband of Mary, Queen of Scots, the second husband, mm. um, assassinated probably by her third husband or on his orders, um, which led to her getting locked up for 20 years. And um, mm. Tom, Thomas Beckett in 1170, which was the murder in the cathedral, which uh, mm. fascinating story. That's the one with the king saying, oh, oh, who will rid me of this turbulent priest? And um, so his <laughs> um, guards went off, great, we'll go get him. The king wants him killed. Oh, no, I was just talking out loud. It wasn't an order I was giving. <laughs> That's a fascinating read. And Julius Caesar and the things that he'd done, and that was really interesting. I mean, even though it's only about um, six pages, there was so much history of his works and what he'd done, and it was really interesting um, reading that because I knew uh, when he died on the Ides of March, but other than that, I didn't know too much. And uh, both the Kennedys, Malcolm X, and really fascinating book it sounds like a good one to just pick yes. up read a bit and then and then put down but also to give you a bit of a taster yeah. of, of this person and then you know you can follow it on you might go off and yeah borrow yeah. a borrow a more complete history and, and i've always loved short stories because they can lead you on to um a novel that you might like to continue or introduce you to an author that you might not have read before and so similar with this you know like as you said um you can find out about someone that you might want to research further or even just improve your knowledge you know and uh your general knowledge and there's uh how many have we got 48 people 
So just that dipping into wow. history and just having a little read and even uh, with kids, you know, older kids, there might be someone they're interested in. So you can say, oh, look, this one, you know, is about so-and-so or Gandhi, this Gandhi, of course, you know, and you can read that and then it might spark them onto something else. I think it's a really good read. So even though it's a bit heavy because it's a biography and, and non-fiction, they're in small bites. Mm. It could lead to good discussions. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Okay, that is that has gone on my list. <laughs> my list is now quite large. I'm sure everyone listening at home probably has the same <laughs> problem, but we we will keep enabling you to add more books. My second one isn't actually a book I've read. It's a recommendation from one of our other staff members uh, who sent this through to me. So Lisa gives this book five stars, highly recommended. Mm. So I'm just going to read this out for you. Uh, Lisa recommends Travelling with Ghosts by Shannon Leone Fowler. This book runs through many emotions, the first being shock and then disbelief as Shannon's fiancé, Sean, is stung and killed by a box jellyfish in Thailand. What started as a carefree couple enjoying a tropical holiday plunges Shannon into indescribable grief and disbelief after authorities try to classify Sean's death as a drunk drowning. Not wanting to scare tourists, there were no warnings of the dangers and authorities will not admit the truth. Shannon tries to deal with her grief, carrying on their travels solo to honour Sean. She learns about the devastating history of many similar deaths in Thailand and the cover-ups while learning that she is strong enough to find the truth and keep going. This heart-wrenching story also shows one person's determination and resilience to uncover the truth. That's very interesting. And when you said uh, box jellyfish, I immediately thought Cairns, you know, and I thought tropical Queensland. Mm. And I haven't heard of any in Thailand, so there must be quite a bit of a cover-up. Yeah. So that one was from Lisa, mm. and it sounds like a quite emotional yes. read. Mm. So thanks so much to Lisa for, for submitting that. Um, we love sharing everyone's recommendations. And, of course, if anyone at home has a recommendation um, that you'd like us to share on an episode of Recently Returned, um, you can send it through to us via our Facebook page or send us an email to recentlyreturned at wyndham.vic.gov.au. Well, that's a great idea, isn't it? Because I'm sure some people have seen some books that we haven't seen yet or even ones that are new out and the library would probably purchase them. If they like it, someone else mm -hmm. might. Yeah, definitely. And and we just love hearing from from everyone at home. So please contact us. And on that note, I just want to say a big thank you to Emily and Paulina for coming on this episode. You've talked about some great books and I'm sure people at home like me have now added them to their reading list. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. It's been enjoyable. So that's it from us today. As always, thanks for listening and happy reading.